How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. And today I'm getting my planer back running. I had mentioned in a previous video, I installed new feed rollers in it. Uh, they kind of fell apart. They're urethane after, I don't know, almost 30 something years. Uh, I'm not sure how long I've had the planers since the 80s. And, uh, but this is my uh, Makita. Waterstone uh, sharpening unit I use, and it's a model 9820-2. Now I've had this for a really long time too. Uh, it has a water tray up here, reservoir, and it you drip it onto the stone. The stone spins, and you have a sliding. Well, this is the adjustable platen, and then you install your piece you want to grind on here and slides back and forth across the stone and, and all that and sharp to sharpen your edge. Now, this does an absolutely wonderful job. It takes a few minutes to get set up uh, as far as getting the blade in here properly and at the right angle. And you put it on there and you adjust it as, you're, as you start doing this to get the angle and you check the wear. And it's not, it only takes a few minutes and you're adjusting the height and adjusting the angle of the platen and the angle that the blade is actually mounted in the slide piece. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of that, but it only takes a few minutes to, as you're doing it, you check your, you pull, you pull it off, check the wear, and see if you're getting it nice and straight. Straight is important because you're gonna put this in the planer and adjust it to the edge anyway, so. Uh, if it's if it's not parallel with the back edge, it's okay. Uh, you don't want it off a lot, but you won't be. And uh, you sharpen the edge. I'll, I'll go through and we'll do a little more on this one. Now my planer is a Makita model 2040, a 400 millimeter wide uh, power planer. An excellent machine. Uh, other than the rollers coming apart and keeping the blade sharp, it's about it. So it's about 15 inches wide. And uh, these, are, these are actually very sharp still, but I felt a couple little rough spots. And usually I sharpen them up so you could shave with them. Uh, after this, I'll hand sharpen them, uh, doing a polish. This is a 1200 grit water stone, Japanese water stone. Waterstones are the way to go. If you want stuff razor sharp and fast, it's the way to go. So I'll turn this on, and I adjust the water to it's a drip. Now, what you want to do is let it warm up and you're dripping water on it so that the water absorbs throughout the stone. Um, it, it takes a few minutes to get it warmed up as far as getting the stone, stone saturated. I'm just going to adjust, bring it back down into contact. Get my, a little more water going. I tell you, this only, in a, I, this only takes a few minutes to, to do this, and you must be very careful. It's very, very sharp. Very sharp. I can probably shave with that right there. And I have no nicks. This, this is the blade that had the nicks, and uh, I don't feel them. So we'll take that one out and do the next one. And I just loosen these clamps. Slip that one out. And I can slip this one in.
going again here, and this should be fairly close as far as adjustments go. I'll just bring her down and see what kind of contact I have. Sounds really good, it's making contact the whole way. Now I'm just checking to see where I'm, I mean, I'm hitting on the heel. So. Yeah, I'm hitting on the heel of the edge. So we need to go out with it a little bit more. And that's adjusting these. I don't want these too tight here. You gotta be able to move the blade. Still touching on the heel a little bit. All right, uh, I think I'm pretty good. Got a nice edge on there, and then we'll uh, hand, hand grind them a little bit. All right, this is a 1200 grit uh, Japanese water stone. So I just put water on there. Um, my other ones I keep in a, in a water bath. This is more of a polishing almost. Making sure there's no, you know, wire edge or anything. And then on the back.
All right, so if here I have a 400 and 800, and this is my 1200. I took a couple swipes on the 800 and then back to the 1200 for a few swipes. So these are, uh, these are nice and sharp now, sharp enough to shave with. Um, yeah, sharp enough to shave the hair right off. You can see here, shave, shave the hair right off, yeah, right? Pretty nice. We'll try a piece of paper, we'll see. Oh yeah, just like nothing. It's, these are good enough for what I want to do as far as planing goes. Uh, very, very nice, came out good. Nice, even edge. We'll put them in. Now this is the top of the planer. Here, this is the cover right there. Top of the planer. The wood comes in from this side. And here's the head, cutter head. Two cutters that we sharpened. And this is a spring plate uh, that the cutter will slip underneath here. And then we're going to adjust it. We have these locking plates that go on top. So first off, we're going to do is put the, uh, get, we'll get the cutter in right here. And this just slips between the spring plate and the cutter head. Now, this has uh, two lock positions up over here. You can lock it up with the cutter edge for setting it and down for tightening it. So we'll just turn it up here and lock it in place. Slip this in. The bolts go through it in those slots. And just, we just gently get it over here uh, to line up with the bolt hole so the bolts get in. And these sit over the over the top of this, like so. Then the bolts go in. I'm putting a little never seize on them. Screw these down until they just touch. No. Basically, no tension on them at all, just to hold things in place. The spring plate holds the cutting, the cutting blade in place. Now, locking this in place, and you push this down so it's nice and snug. There is zero play in this. And then remember, this is sharp, really sharp. I have a little piece of uh, walnut here. And I'm going to gently press this and press the blade down in place across the surfaces. I'm just, just doing this with my, by hand. Don't pound it. Their method for doing setting this up it actually works pretty good. Get you within thousands um, of being being straight here. Uh, so I, I just go with it. It's not too hard to do. It's it's pretty easy. So there. Now no marks. Now we're going to take this block and set it on here. Just gently hold it, unlock it, and we're going to back this off so that the cutting edge isn't touching the block. We're going to gently hold it. I'm going to put a little pencil mark over here. And as I rotate it, it will move. And then the pencil mark. The difference between the two pencils marks should be between five and six millimeters. I'm a little under there, probably about four, four there, four and a half. I have my caliper set at five millimeters. So I'm a little, little shy, so that means it's a little low. And we'll do the same on this end.
then that is right at five millimeters. So this end just is a little bit low. So we'll rotate it up. We'll reach in this slot here and the rear of the blade, the blade is down here. And you can just, I'm just gonna give it a slightest tap. It's, we're only talking thousands. I'm just gonna get the type, slightest little tap forward, come back. I'm gonna check this again. Oh wow, see now, now I'm like half an inch. So, you know, now it's like, um, what was that? 12, 13 easy millimeters. So a little too far, right? Now, I use my knocker here, it has a nylon end on it, or UHMW end, and I have a brass end. So just a little tap with the UHMW to tap this back down again, just ever so gently. And just get it in play, get it to, till you get your five millimeters. Up, about eight. I'm not even touching now. I went too far. Anyway, we'll go back and forth until, uh, so we get this just right. We're at five and just a touch under five. I'm going to call that good for now. We're going to snug this up. They're about, about equal there. Just put just under five, so. Now I'll go and check both colors right here. Okay. Okay. Now I've already done the other side. Get a comparison about what we're looking at. So this side is just a touch uh, out farther, but that'll be okay. Uh, for what this is for, that's, that would usually is close enough. And uh, that's it. This goes back on. Little tabs hold it down. There we go. I even have the, this is the original uh, little tool kit that came with the planer. Screwdrivers, blocks, a couple extra bolts. Uh, a couple of uh, push-in plastic trigger things. Actually, I think these are for my chop saw, the trigger deal for my chop saw, extra ones. And a uh, sprocket set. How about that? Spare parts. Brand new. In the bag. Never used. Not too many people have that stuff. Perfect. We're ready to uh, give it a give it a go. Give it a test. Ah. 
absolutely perfect. No sniping where you know you might get an extra a little cut out at the end or something, but nothing or at the beginning or or either end. No sniping. That's perfect. And uh, if you get sniping, uh, usually it's the rollers on the table. On this this model has rollers in the table, two of them, and uh, usually it's the rollers are off because the top roller is pushing that down and if it's if those aren't set just right so they're pretty much even with the table uh, you'll get a movement in this and that's what causes sniping uh, that's just perfect and it's perfect smooth no grooves that just cut beautiful we're ready to go I love this machine this is a great, this is a great, <laughs> it's a great planer. This planer has a, a, a gauge, a, a scale on the side here, so when you adjust it, you can, you have a scale, it's a metric, an inch, and then you have this little, little rod here, and that will give you an idea real quick of how thick of a cut you're going to make, uh, how much that rises up, uh, so you know right where you're at and uh, it gives you an idea if you're even going to cut it all so you can just hold that there bring that down to get a little whatever cut you want to make and uh, run her through now I'm gonna set this I want all my boards to be the same for the windows and uh, We'll be running all those through and fixing them up. It's working as expected. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.